This case is about a 40 years old male Caucasian patient, uh, heavy smoker with no prior medical history and no uh, drug abuse, uh, according to his testimony, uh, who presented with, at the ER with a non ST elevation in my. And after the administration of uh, the original uh, medications, uh, the plan was to perform an angiogram via the right radial approach. So uh, you can see this is uh, the six French diagnostic Jatkins right catheter, and uh, this was the right coronary artery, a relatively small uh, artery with uh, no disease. This is the left system, uh, dominant circ and uh, a little bit of overlapping and uh, tortuosity. And again, uh, these are the images. And uh, from the still frames, you can see that there is something in the LED and the diagonal branch. So uh, this is, uh, you can see uh, the LED, there is something just before the takeoff of the uh, septal perforator branch. And there is also something in the diagonal. Uh, so uh, our impression was that this was in one vessel in one major branch, significant disease. Uh, according to, to Medina classification uh, 011 lesion. Uh, so the strategy was to treat both vessels with DES and a dedicated bifurcation technique since the ostium of the diagonal was very close to the LED lesion. Uh, the first BMW wire went to the diagonal branch. And then the second BMW wire went to the LED. And you see here nothing after wiring both vessels. And then we remove the wires. And uh, again, in summary, the first wire went to the diagonal branch. The second wire went to the LAD. And uh, no visible coronary artery disease after wiring both vessels. So this is the final picture without the wires, no disease, no PCI. And the verdict was that the patient had the non-ST elevation MI due to severe coronary artery spasm. And uh, we decided to treat the patient medically with dual antiplatelet therapy, beta blockers, nitrates, and statins, and maybe at the second time to perform an aketilocholine test. However, two months later, the patient came back with typical chest pain, but without any ECG changes, while he was still under medication, but continued smoking. And the next day, we decided to perform a treadmill test, which unfortunately was positive for ischemia. And uh, then, a couple of days after, we did a thallium scan nuclear test, which was also positive for ischemia in the EPIX. And running out of uh, options, uh, we decided to perform a new angiogram uh, via the left radial approach at this time. You can see this is the left system with the dominant circ. There was nothing there, nothing in the LAD and the diagonal branch. And uh, you see that from the still frames that uh, there was no disease two months after the initial event, despite the two positive non-invasive tests. And this was the story. At the baseline, we had the non-ST elevation MI. And then we had the initial procedure without the PCI. And two months later, still, there was nothing there. So the patient had coronary artery spasm, even though he was not a female uh, with Asian origin. He was just a 40 years old Caucasian male. Uh, and he presented with typical acute coronary syndrome. And presumably due to uh, heavy uh, smoking and uh, thus uh, with inflammation or endothelial dysfunction or even an autonomous nervous system stimulation. And our diagnosis was done with coronary angiography. We never performed or confirmed the diagnosis with the provocative tests. And uh, the treatment was uh, medication, only medication. And uh, in these cases, most of the patients, they are doing fine uh, in long-term outcome. However, this patient had a multivessel coronary uh, spasm that sometimes has been identified uh, as a predictor of adverse prognosis. And the patient had also a high-risk coronary uh, spasm score that classified him as a very high-risk patient. In conclusion, coronary artery spasm is a possible cause of ischemia and acute coronary syndromes. Many proposed mechanisms and risk factors, including smoking, endothelial dysfunction, and inflammation, have been proposed. Uh, medical therapy is the gold standard uh, treatment. And of course, in the vast majority of the cases, there is no need for PCI. FYI, the patient is doing fine. He quit smoking, and he is still under medications. Thank you so much for your attention.
Did you use any ma medications in the lab the second? The, no, the second time we didn't have no. Just, no nitro and nothing. Yes. Quickly missed. I had a, your case was a little bit more dramatic with an Einstein. You had an elective patient chest pain. Mm -hmm. Did an initial picture. The LED was completely shut down. ST elevations. I thought the patient was going into shock. She was. The LED was gone. And I wired, but in my hospital, that counts as a failed intervention. I gave nitro after the wiring and everything dissolved. So the case was reviewed because it's the C4 restricted, but excellent case. Thank what you. beta blocker did you use? Uh, low pressure. Would anyone of you use calcium channel blockers instead? Yeah, yes. we also, at uh, the second time, we use uh, Syscor, uh, Nisoldipin, which is something that we use in Europe a lot. I don't know if you have it here in the United exactly. States, yes. So what kind yeah. of your radio cocktail? Do you have any or uh, uh, Well, uh, we use usually uh, nitroglycerin and uh, heparin, and verapamil is not our everyday practice, but sometimes if you have spasm in the radial artery, then you have to, to inject. But not at this time, not at this patient. I mean. had a similar case to this about three months ago. Mm -hmm. Two presentations, just like your patient. On the third presentation, uh, the patient had pan spasm in all three of the coronaries. Actually. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my guess is that there is something like uh, drug abuse or uh, something that they, they usually don't mention, they don't break up, uh, or it's something like uh, something more rare condition like Kuni syndrome that we saw at the, the previous uh, session. Which focal spasm, would you guys ever spent uh, for refractory medical therapy, would you ever spent focal spasm that's recurrent? No. I think the divorce actually ran. Spasm somewhere else. else. But I think there are certain circumstances where people think it's a stenosis and they've stented it, and then after the fact they realize they just stented spasm. It's important to give a nitro yeah, exactly. exactly. yeah. 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 Always give a nitro if you can. Even when they're hyper, that, that's the key, though, even when they're in shock states. Yeah. yeah, the problem is that if they evolve into shock, then the reflex is to give more pressure so yeah. that worsens the case of the patient going to bite right. into a. Uh, even on a hypotensive patient, 15 nitro can still be tolerated. And also please keep in mind that these are non normal vessels. They are non atherosclerotic vessels, but still there is endothelial dysfunction, so they don't react uh, normal. Thank you.